everyone. Welcome to KenCast. It's great to see you today. We have a very exciting show. I know a lot of you are Cobra Kai fans and you're looking forward to Cobra Kai Season 6. Well, we had a hint from John Hurwitz about potential classic Karate Kid characters from the movies appearing in Cobra Kai Season 6. And so based on that hint, today we are going to go through all, pretty much all the potential characters this could be. Uh, I've started a poll in the live chat. Uh, if those selections don't cover who you think is going to be in season six, please let me know in the live chat. It'll only let me put in four uh, right now. If you look at the poll right now, I have Julie Pierce, Dennis and Snake, Freddie Fernandez, and Colonel Dugan. Uh, top choice right now is Julie Pierce. We've already had 18 votes. So guys, go ahead on YouTube and vote. I want to hear what you have to say. This is going to be a fun show today. Now, before we get going, I would like to welcome everyone in the live chat. And if you're watching on replay, go ahead and leave a comment below the video, and then we can all see your comment for all time. Uh, but hello to everyone in the chat today. Uh, Karate Wolf says Daryl Vidal as Mr. Miyagi. Wow, very cool. I know, Daryl Vidal, he's, he's fantastic. And um, I do hope we get to see him in season six. Uh, AEH says... Hi, Ken. I'm still hoping for Julie and Dennis as a couple <laughs> to give Daniel more drama, payback for Silver. That is hilarious. I love that. And thanks for being a channel member, AEH. Um, a reminder that there will be a member for finalist members and above. There'll be a, a, a chat later on uh, in about an hour and a half. So stay tuned for that. Um, great to see you, Jasmine, all the way from Amsterdam. That's wonderful. Nerdworld says, hello, Ken, in the chat. How are we doing today? I think Julie will appear and we get a Daryl Vidal cameo or mention. Very cool. I love it. There is a lot of love for Daryl Vidal, which is absolutely fantastic. Tig Terry Silver Rocks. Hello. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you for being a channel member. And of course, thank you for being an executive producer of this Ken cast. Thank you, Tig Terry Silver Rocks. And thanks for being a champion in real life. Uh, Darkest Hour, great to see you in my head. Hello, Jorge. Save silver. Yes, Jorge, save silver. We all have to do our part to save silver. Mm. Water tastes so much better coming out of a save silver mug. And uh, will Terry Silver's story factor into who we might see in season six? We'll have to see. Um, Sasha, David, good evening. Good evening, Sasha. Good to see you. Uh, Javier is joining us from Facebook, watching on Facebook, uh, save Lawrence and save Barnes. Very cool. I love it. And, uh, guys, if you are watching on X Twitter, uh, you can reply to the live stream and your comment will appear, uh, for me to pull up. So feel free to comment if you'd like the spooky fangirl says it would be so cool to see Julie in season six. Indeed. Also, I hope it's warm where you live. It's freezing here in the Midwest. Yeah, it's um, so in L.A. right now, it is it's pretty mild. I'm not going to lie. It's uh, we had kind of a I don't know, cooler week last week, but uh, so far it's uh, it's been pretty mild today. So that's fantastic for us. And I hope it warms up for you soon. Uh, Marianella says, hi, everyone. <laughs> Save silver. Yes. Uh, Jorge says, hi, Jaws. Good to see you, Jaws. Uh, Jaws says, hi, Ken. My bet or probabilities. Julie Pierce, 99.99%. Julie, Susan, Julie Pierce, uh, 80%. Dutch and Colonel Dugan, 70%. Uh, I really like how you put percentages because you're right. We don't know anything for sure. And maybe at the end, as we go through all these characters today, we will put percentages on the likelihood of certain characters coming back. Um, and hopefully... You'll today you'll see characters that you didn't think about, and maybe you'll have ideas of how they might actually fit into Cobra Kai uh, better than say maybe the obvious choices. Nathan says, "How about bringing back Mike Barnes? He was only in two episodes of season five. Definitely doesn't do him justice." I I have a feeling Mike Barnes has to come back in some way. Uh, you know, I I would think all these big characters need to somehow make an appearance in season six. It's going to be a stuffed season. Uh, there's a lot of story. Uh, it's going to be epic, obviously. But uh, I, I agree. I would love to see Mike Barnes come back. I, th I think it's fairly likely that he'd come back. I don't know. What, what do you guys think? Um, 
let's see. Oh, Jaws is talking about Susan. Yes. Yes. J uh, Julie Fields. Yes. From the original Karate Kid. I love it. Uh, we will get to her character. Uh, Dale says, hi, Ken. Just ordered ulterior motives and hollow point. Fantastic. And guys, you know, if you're watching this channel or have been for a while, we are massive fans of Thomas Ian Griffith and uh, all his movies. And so uh, Dale has just gotten uh, some amazing Thomas Ian Griffith cinema. Uh, anytime you're able to get these, I recommend getting them. Physical media is fantastic. And uh, I think sometimes we'll have to talk more about Tom Thomas Ian Griffith's other movies as well. We did do a whole episode on excessive force. So we'd love to get back and watch some of his other movies. Uh, Lisa says, hi, how are, I'm, Hey, I'm doing great. We're talking Cobra Kai season six and karate kid. And I get to talk with you guys. I am doing fantastic. It's great to see you, Lisa. Um, Michael says, I'm going with Colonel Dugan, but if you get one, you get the other interesting point. My money's on Dugan and Julie. Yes. Yes. Uh, Clifford, thanks for being a channel member, Clifford. And it's great to see you. Uh, Curtis Clark joining us from Facebook says Julie will appear because her character arc matches Tori with her parents sick and dead and she's angry with the world around her. Interesting point. Julie will help Tori channel that anger and in turn help Sam resolve her remaining issues with Tori. Wouldn't that be wonderful? I think that'd be absolutely fantastic. And I love how you're thinking very deeply about how Julie could fit into the character arcs of Cobra Kai. Um, darkest hour. Great to see you. What about a Ken Cole cameo interviewing Johnny on the podcast and Johnny has no clue how podcasts work or what they are. Hey, uh, I thank you. A very kind thought. Uh, that, that would be fun. That would be fun. That's a very kind thought. Um, but yeah, uh, Johnny, of course, amazing character. And I'm, I'm so glad he got a showcase on uh, Cobra Kai. Thank you. Darkest hour. Um, nerd world. Any news on season six, Ken? Okay. So, I haven't been able to independently confirm, but uh, there are some casting notices going out, um, you know, about specific things. Um, so I haven't, uh, talking straight with Nate sent me some stuff, which was absolutely fantastic. I haven't been able to confirm anything yet, but we do know they're filming. Um, we do know Alicia Hannah Kim, who said hi on X Twitter today, uh, she is there. She is uh, posting pictures, non-spoiler pictures from season six, but she is filming. So it is happening. Uh, they are they are filming. We don't know exactly what they're filming. Obviously, we don't know the story. Uh, they're keeping everything under wraps. But this is definitely evolving. So uh, we will. The one bit of news that isn't super new news is the fact that we will see a character from the Karate Kid movies in season six that we've never seen before. So we're going to see if we can figure out which characters that might be today. Uh, Mega Fire Explosions Productions. I love it. Hi, Ken. I really love your content, and I'm also a Cobra Kai fan. Thank you so much for watching, and thank you for commenting. It's great to know you. And feel free to share all your thoughts in the chat today on who you think could appear in Season 6. Sasha David says, In my humble opinion, Chris hides at du Colonel Dugan's place, and we find out Cobra Kai's original name was actually Alpha Elite. <laughs> That's so much fun. I love it. Uh, Santino says, could Dugan help Terry get out of jail? I love it. I love where you're going with that. And we will get to Colonel Dugan. Actually, the more I think about it, we have a lot to get to today. Uh, and we will get to everything in just a second. Rocky Balboa. Thanks for joining us, Rock. Uh, Julie will be back to take on and defeat Sensei Kim. Both are women. She is the ace up Daniel sleeve. No one expected Sensei Kim. Silver will never expect Julie. He never knew about her. Very cool. And you're right. Uh, Julie Pierce would be totally off Terry Silver's radar and everyone's radar. Unless Terry is, is beyond in terms of his surveillance and had been keeping tabs on Danny Boy all these years. But I doubt it. I think that's a great point. The element of surprise. Beetlejuice 101. As much as I want Julie Pierce to come back in season six, I still want Colonel Dugan to come back in season six. I agree. I'd love Colonel Duke and Michael Ironside to appear. It would be absolutely amazing. And guys, there is a chat poll going on right now. We're up to 35 votes already. 83% uh, have voted for Julie Pierce. 6% have voted for Dennis and Snake. And also 6% for Freddie Fernandez and Colonel Dugan. If you would like to vote... 
go ahead and vote in the chat. I want to hear what you think. But guys, we have so many characters to talk about. They could only fit four on here. So I'm wondering if that will change as we go through our potential characters. All right, guys, let's dive into this. We have a tweet, and this is back from earlier this month. John Hurwitz said this. He said, I can't promise the Hawk or any Oscar winners in this photo. I will never give potential spoilers, but rest assured, we'll have at least one character from the Karate Kid films return that hasn't yet appeared in Cobra Kai. Okay, so that is the inspiration of this live stream today. So guys, I think we need to get into this. And the only way to do this is by going through each of the movies. And we are going to touch on almost every character that we haven't seen yet in the Cobra Kai series. And we'll talk about whether it's likely or not. So let's uh, let's get going. Okay, so here's the title card for the Karate Kid. This is the original movie. You can see Daniel and Lucille driving away in their uh, station wagon. Um, and so we're going to be talking about all the characters in the original Karate Kid movie. Now, if you'll notice in the center, and uh, let's see if you no, I can't see my pointer in the center, there's the uh, there's a girl with a dark shirt kind of running after the car. That is Judy. So uh, this is the famous first or first girlfriend of Daniel uh, before he heads out. Uh, Allie buries Judy. So this is Judy um, running after the car. Will we see her? I don't know. Daniel talked about her when he was talking to Sam about relationships. Um, Daniel did mention Judy. So will we see her? Probably not too likely, but anything could happen. That would be kind of just a blast from the past for sure. But anyway, let's, let's get into this. First up, let's consider good old Mrs. Milo and her dog. Well, uh, as you could probably guess, it's probably not likely at all. Mrs. Milo could pop up in Cobra Kai season six. Uh, she and her dog have probably passed on rest in peace. Uh, however, it's possible if we get some flashbacks, who knows, could we get a Mrs. Milo flashback? Uh, probably really unlikely, but uh, for as you'll see, we're going to go through every possibility. So I think that's probably like a 1% chance of this happening. Um, I don't know. I'd be interested to hear, hear what you guys have to say. Um, let's see. Uh, I see the super chats, guys. I don't know. I will get to them um, in just a second. Thank you so much. Okay, next possibility. Freddie. Freddie Fernandez. A lot of people have talked about Freddie. Uh, as you'll remember, Freddie was the uh, first real friend Daniel had when he moved in. Uh, he lived right in the same apartment complex, uh, invited him to a beach party. It seemed like Daniel made a fast friend and things were going well. That's until Daniel got his butt kicked. And apparently Freddie was really disillusioned and disappointed that Daniel wasn't as tough as he said he was. Uh, so um, the last thing we see, we kind of see Freddie celebrating at the end, cheering Daniel on in the tournament at the end. But really, I think that's kind of in the background. We see Freddie the last time I think that makes an impact on the audience. And when he's kind of making fun of Daniel, where he's like, hey, it's the Karate Kid. He gives Daniel that name, the Karate Kid. Let's see some moves. And it's kind of a, um, I don't know, it's kind of an insulting, uh, sarcastic thing. He's making fun of Daniel, which I think makes the audience kind of feel like Freddie Freddy wasn't that great a guy anyway. Um, it is kind of in the background that he comes back and cheers on Daniel at the end of the tournament. But um, so I don't know. Uh, he's obviously he could still be around in the valley. He could still be there. Uh, it would make sense for him to be around. But how he fits into the story at this point, I'm not sure. I would think it would have to be a cameo. Um, and I have a feeling in Cobra Kai season six, we're not going to see a lot of gratuitous cameos um, unless it fits in or it's very subtle. Um, so I, I don't know. You have to think, why would the character Freddie Fernandez be introduced in season six? There could be an opening in the story. And I bet if there is an opening, then he'll appear in there. But I actually don't think it's too likely we'll see Freddie Fernandez. Could be wrong. Could be absolutely wrong. Um, but I don't know. Personally, I'd put him at 20%, something like that. 20, 20 to 30% chance of appearing in season six. I don't know. I'd be interested to hear what you guys think. Um, 
Next up in Cobra Kai, oh, I'm sorry, next up in the original Karate Kid movie, Lucille's manager. That's right. If you remember, Lucille was talking to Daniel in the restaurant and she, Lucille was so excited about being trained as a manager. And then there's this woman in the background who says, Lucille, let's go. Here they come. And so I'm, I'm guessing she's a managerial type. She's kind of being kind of short with Lucille, like we got to go. Um, so I assume she's Lucille's manager. It's a character. I obviously think that she was older than Lucille at the time. Characters probably passed away. Uh, I put this guy's at probably a 1% chance of appearing in Cobra Kai season six. But of course, I'm interested to get your thoughts. Uh, you know, it's uh, it, anything's possible, right? Okay, so next up, Dutch. Okay, guys, this has probably been the most requested character to appear in the Cobra Kai series. Played, of course, by Chad McQueen. Did an amazing job. Uh, everyone wants Dutch back. He is Johnny's. He was Johnny's friend uh, and fellow Cobra in the original Karate Kid movies. A Karate Kid movie. I think it would make a lot of sense for Dutch to appear. We know that he's in prison. Uh, the character is in prison, and we do know that Chad McQueen's daughter posted to say, and this was a couple years ago, that Chad McQueen will not be appearing in the Cobra Kai series. So, um, unless Chad McQueen changed his mind or changes his mind about appearing in Cobra Kai, I let me put it this way. If he did change his mind, I bet there would be a part for him or there'd be a way to get him into the story. And I think that would be an amazing addition to the story. But I think it all hinges on whether Chad McQueen would change his mind. And for his daughter to come out publicly and say that so definitively, uh, you know, you got to think that 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 has to be a decision, a decision he's made, which um, for whatever reason, uh, you, you know, we wish him the best. Um, I know as fans, we wish we could see him again. But we it, it's looking like, I don't know, probably a 10 percent chance I would put it at for Dutch appearing in Cobra Kai season six. That is unless he changes his mind. So I, I know we've had people in the comments who said they have known uh, that they have family members who know Chad McQueen. And I'm like, oh, if you could convince them to come back, that would be great. But, you know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, I agree. DJ Club rules 10 percent chance of. Yeah, um, I, I agree. Um, let's let's move on, shall we? OK, so we have the distracted Cobra Kai student from Karate Kid one. This is you know, they were going through punches and this guy kind of glanced over at Kreese and then Kreese just brought him right to the ground and threatened him. Uh, and he says, if you ever lose your concentration in a fight, you're dead meat. And then he's like, yes, yeah, sensei. And this is the pushups on your knuckles guy. It's another Cobra. I, we never saw him at the tournament. I am wondering if the student maybe left the dojo at some point. He didn't like this uh, treatment by Kreese. I don't know. We've never seen him again up to this point however if it's possible to bring in more Cobra Kai students uh in season six he's a candidate although you know we don't learn his name and you know it would take a minute I think to establish who he is and he didn't have a strong personal connection to Johnny um I don't know I'd love to see him again but uh yeah it's probably a low likelihood of uh this guy appearing again in the Cobra Kai series but uh, let's let's continue. Daryl Vidal. Yes. OK, so Daryl Vidal uh, is he doubled for Mr. Miyagi uh, with the crane kick and he kind of came up with the form of the crane kick for the movie. Uh, and he was the one who actually performed it on the stumps on the beach scene. Uh, and alternatively, you see him here. He had a very memorable fight with Johnny Lawrence. Uh, in the tournament and he really is a, a master martial artist he appeared on William Christopher Ford's 52 masters series um he is absolutely fantastic um and I think there's a good chance a much better chance I don't know how big a chance um but I think it's like it seems likely that there should be some kind of possible part for Daryl Vidal uh, because he had so much of the soul of the Karate Kid and had that fight. He actually fought Johnny Lawrence 
you know, who is ostensibly the lead of the Cobra Kai series. So I, I think that there's a possibility we could see Daryl Vidal in season six. I am very interested to hear what you guys have to say. Um, then there's Jerry. Jerry, no one talks about Jerry. Uh, Jerry was a Cobra Kai student. He fought Bobby in class. Um, he fought Daniel in the tournament. And uh, he is played by um, Larry B. Scott, who was actually in a lot of things in the 80s. Uh, he, you know, he played Lamar in the Revenge of the Nerds movies. Um, and, you know, he's, you know, he's been acting quite a bit. Um, so I don't know. I, I, it would be cool to see Jerry again, but who knows? Uh, you know, maybe the actor, uh, you know, isn't interested in coming back. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure that he is absolutely considered and it hasn't worked out for one reason or the other, but it's possible in season six, maybe, maybe, um, I don't know. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to think, but you know, I, I don't get why no one really talks about him because he was there. He fought Daniel. He's in the thick of it. Um, and he fought Bobby. Okay. Uh, so next up is Barbara and Susan. Yes. So Susan played by Julie Fields. I, uh, we had a comment earlier about, uh, Susan, uh, you know, she's kind of, kind of a negative disposition. I would say, um, Allie's friend, uh, kind of tells Daniel off. She's loyal friend to Allie, which is great. Uh, she's tied to Allie, but also, uh, she is, and let me bring this up. The actress who plays counselor Blatt on Cobra Kai has confirmed that her character is the little sister of Susan. So I think that's a really cool tie in. So if, if, um, that's the case, it's very possible we could see Susan. It might mean that Susan is still tied into the Valley. Uh, she's still around. Um, of course she's, uh, I don't know. She she's known best as Allie's friend, but then the question is: Is Allie going to come back for season six? Will we see Elizabeth Shue back? And if so, could we see Barbara and Susan because they're tied to Allie? Um, I don't know. That this would be kind of the cameo. I don't know how likely it is, but this would be something where I think it would be just a bonus for fans. Like it would be exciting and unexpected to see Barbara and Susan again uh, somehow. And um, obviously, they knew Daniel as well. So even if Allie doesn't come back, then it's possible, um, you know, who, who knows what could happen if it's, if there's a moment where the entire Valley is, is rallying for Daniel or something like that, maybe a lot of his old friends could come out of the woodwork and we'd see them again. So, um, it's possible. I think it's possible. We could, I, you know, again, maybe not too likely. It wouldn't be my top choice, but, uh, it could be one of those kind of surprise appearances. Um, and then, okay. So karate kid two's next. We'll get to that in just a second. I want to get to everyone's comments. And also I want to get to the poll. Okay. We have almost 50 votes right now. 81% for Julie Pierce, 11% for Dennis and snake. And then Freddie Fernandez and Colonel Dugan pulling up the rear. So if you're watching this and you haven't had a chance to vote in the poll on YouTube, go ahead and do that. Um, I am very curious to to uh, to see what everyone thinks, especially after we go through all of these potential characters. Now we've just gone through the first movie, okay? Uh, and if I miss any characters, let me know. But we've just gone through the first movie, and we've got three more movies to go uh, of potential characters that could be, could appear in Cobra Kai season six. Um, let me get to your comments, uh, Clifford. Thank you so much, Clifford, for the super chat. Thanks for being a channel member. Uh, Clifford says, Ken, do you think Kreese trained Colonel Dugan because their fighting stances are similar? Um, I agree. Their fighting stances are similar. Um, I think it's possible that they, and I made a video about this a long time ago, that Kreese knows Dugan, that actually Kreese and Terry Silver know Dugan because, uh, and I, I kind of lay out what I think is the evidence for it. I think that Colonel Dugan could have been in that POW camp with them. And I think Colonel Dugan could have been that first soldier that we saw fighting over the pit of Cobras, the other soldier, the one who wins and comes back all kind of shell shocked from the experience. And Terry talks to and says, you know, how deep is that pit, man? And then 
that guy who looked completely devastated, I think could be Colonel Dugan. So if that's the case, they may know each other from that experience. And that would be a new uniquely bonding experience for the three of them. Uh, they may have kept in touch. Uh, they, they may have gone on to serve together. They, you know, we, we don't know, but, um, Kim Sun Young, who we will see in season six. Now, now listen to this guys. Kim Sun Young is confirmed to appear in season six. He will have a speaking role. He's the grandfather of Kim Daun. Okay. So he trained Kim Sun Young trained so many, uh, American military of that time who would be in the Vietnam war. I think it's, we know that he trained, uh, crease and Terry silver, but could he have also trained Colonel Dugan? And is that why, uh, Dugan's fighting stances and style and attitude about being strong, you know, no mercy, you know, he almost takes it to the next level. Um, could that also be from master Kim Sun Young? I think it would be fascinating if we have flashback scenes that show crease and silver training with Kim Sun Young, but also, um, maybe Colonel Dugan is one of the students as well. And maybe that's how they, that's how they know each other. Um, I don't know. I, I think anything's possible. I think that's kind of an exciting way to bring back a potential villain for Julie Pierce. That would, I think, let's be honest, Colonel Dugan would slide in really well next to Crease and Terry Silver as far as their attitudes. And, um, you know, Crease is so focused on having an army and soldiers and battle. And that's what Dugan's all about, too. In fact, I would say John Crease in the Cobra Kai series echoes a lot of what Colonel Dugan was saying, because it's almost like Kreese couldn't get past the army. He couldn't get past the war in, in Cobra Kai. You know, he thought of his students as soldiers. Like, and if you look at the movies, it's really Colonel Dugan who has that attitude the most in the movies. Kreese doesn't really go that far. You know, as far as we see him, you know, we don't see too, too, you know, he's kind of in the background. Um, and he definitely has that attitude of strength, but you know, he's not, I don't want to call it delusional. Maybe it is. He doesn't have so much of a delusional mindset of, of treating children as soldiers, but Colonel Dugan and next karate kid definitely has that attitude. So yeah, it would be interesting to see. Um, ho hopefully that, uh, answers your question. It's a, it's a really fascinating discussion. I think, um, Kate Maloney. Good, good to see you, Kate. Thanks for being a channel member. I would love for Bobby and Jimmy to come back and make peace with Daniel. He really needs that. I would love to see that too. I agree that that would be an amazing thing because um, I, I actually think Bobby especially would have made an, a, an excellent Miyagi-Do student and probably would have been Daniel's friend, um, I would think. So I, uh, I, I totally agree with you. Um, sh let's see. Shin Batman's replying, I think to another comment. No, Cobra Kai shouldn't redeem silver. He should, ju should just remain the villain until the very end. And, you know, however we think of Terry, obviously he's, he's a great villain. I think in most people's eyes, you know, he's a villain. Of course on this channel, you know, he's not all bad. Right. Uh, but I think at the very least, Terry is admirable for doing what he thinks is the right thing. And to a certain extent, I think the Cobra Kai series has has followed that. If you look at things from Terry's perspective, you know, I think he's trying to do a good, you know, he sees that Cobra Kai has been good for him and allowed him to do well in business in life. And he's trying to share that with the world. And he's trying to teach kids. Um, and I guess some adults how to, how to fight and how to apply those lessons to their lives. And he's willing to teach kids for reduced fees you know, and, you know, so in a way, I, I don't know, I almost see Terry as being uh, ruthless, more ruthless and going after what he wants, uh, which is not necessarily a, a villainous thing all the time. Um, and I think if you look at the interactions between Terry Silver and Daniel, uh, you can see Daniel's actually being kind of a villain to, to Terry because you know, we want to side with Daniel. We, we sympathize with Daniel, but Terry, uh, but Daniel is, is basically trying to boss Terry Silver around and tell him what he can and can't do. And he's giving Terry Silver ultimatums, um, which, you know, why, 
you know, I, we can understand that, but it's like Daniel has this thing where he has to tell people what they should and shouldn't do. Like Daniel has the moral authority to do that. Um, so I don't know. You could flip it. I, I, I think that maybe Terry Silver is much more of a, uh, yeah, ruthless, uh, neutral. I don't know. You could say he's evil. I don't know. But, um, but I don't know. I, I, I think he's got a lot of great qualities, but he's just ruthless in what he wants. And you can debate about whether, you know, what he wants is always really a good thing. But, uh, so I agree. I, I don't, I don't think Terry Silver needs to be redeemed necessarily, but there could be a point at which what, uh, the things Terry wants are in agreement with, uh, say what Daniel or Johnny would want or what Kreese would want again. Um, I think Terry Silver could be a brief, strong ally maybe if there's a specific thing that needs to be accomplished i don't know so uh so so maybe there's an, a kind of understanding with terry but not necessarily a a redemption um clifford says wasn't daniel the one who defeated johnny in his first tournament yes absolutely he was and um i think that's why he would be a great character to appear in cobra kai season six because of that history um, Kate Maloney says before any guest appearances, there needs to be a tribute to the great Pat E. Johnson who passed away recently indeed. And, um, he's not on the list today, obviously. Um, he was obviously a great martial artist. He worked with so many, uh, wonderful screen martial artists. Uh, he did this martial arts for the Karate Kid movies and also Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, and, and others. So, uh, definitely worthy of a tribute, uh, for Pat E. Johnson. Um, Dr. Sauer, Hil Hillary, Elizabeth Shue and Hillary Swank together would be amazing. It, it would be. And isn't it incredible that the Karate Kid franchise is basically, um, the first breaks for these actresses, um, were the Karate Kid movies and they went on to be, uh, so famous. <laughs> so they're movie stars, you know? Uh, so the Karate Kid movies, they make movie stars. Um, uh, Matt Moore says, thanks for being a channel member, Matt. Susan, what's such a gatekeeper? I'm saying gatekeeper for matters and, and YouTube. Um, well, now Susan, I think was definitely the character in Karate Kid was definitely a gatekeeper for Allie. Uh, a hundred percent, uh, Allie's protector. And, uh, I don't think she wanted, uh, any kind of scummy guys around, around Allie, which, you know, maybe, maybe she had a point. Maybe she saw what happened with Johnny and was looking out for her friend. And that was kind of kind of her attitude um oh so many great comments guys uh let's see jane good to see you both both crease and silver are still reminded of their military days in vietnam i don't think either one of them are over it i agree and i bet colonel dugan isn't over it either uh, don don power ranger great to see you hello ken and all hope everyone is well despite the passing of former cbs sunday morning host charles osgood oh yes Oh, well, rest in peace. I'm I'm sorry to hear that. Um DJ Club Rules, do you think Terry Six is sick? Because we had no idea why he was in the hospital in season five. I made a whole video on this uh, because a lot of people thought that Terry Silver was dying. Um, but I made a whole video and it's called Terry Silver is not dying. Check that out and uh and see what see what you think. I look at all all the evidence presented in the series um and and I think you'll agree, Terry Silver's not dying. In fact, he's stronger than ever. <laughs> so let me know what you think about that. Uh, let's see. Okay, guys, let's continue because we have a lot of characters to get to. Uh, we have update on the poll. Julie Pierce is at 78% chance. A lot of 78% of you think Julie Pierce will appear in season six. 10% say Dennis and Snake. 7% Colonel Dugan and 5% Freddie Fernandez. Go ahead and vote in the YouTube poll, guys. I want to hear what you guys have to say. Let's move on to Karate Kid Part 2. That's right. All right. What are the characters left? Who are the characters left in Karate Kid Part 2 that could appear in Cobra Kai Season 6? The Kadena Air Base Corporal. That's right. When Daniel and Miyagi first pull up looking for Tony Village, they run into Kadena Air Base, and there's a corporal there who greets them. Now, I'm not saying it's likely that this character could appear. It's probably almost a 0% chance this character could appear, but it's possible. He is a character. Uh, he was there 
uh, next to Tomi Village in Okinawa. He's military. Uh, it, was he potentially uh, trained? Well, he's he's an Air Force, so maybe that's different than the Army. Maybe they don't need to learn hand-to-hand -hand combat. But he would be conveniently close to Sato's dojo, you know. And so if uh, any military officers were stationed at Kadena Air Base and they needed to learn martial arts, then uh, Sato's dojo would be very close and convenient. So is it possible that this corporal knows Chosen, knows or knew Sato? It's possible. I don't know. So there could be a connection there. Again, probably not too likely, but he's there. All right, next, boy on the street. Okay, so you'll remember that uh, this character came up to Kumiko and Daniel as they were looking at the dancer in the television talking about the dance. So he came up and he said, oh, Kumiko, are you going to the dance tonight? And he's like, bring your friend. And he, you know, had a flyer and it was, um, he was very excited about this dance. Uh, I bring this character up because he's played by B.D. Wong, who of course has gone on to be a very famous actor, very notably in uh, the Jurassic Park and Jurassic World movies. Um, and so he is still acting. He's out there. Uh, and of course, the question is, uh, how could this character come back? Well, you see, guys, I have a theory about that. That's right. He went to so much trouble to plan this dance. And he went around the city, inviting every young person he saw, people he knew, to come to this dance, this kind of 50s dance. Uh, he ran up to Kumiko and Daniel, and he was so happy to see them and wanted them to come and have fun at this dance. And after all that work that he and his friends, I mean, they they put on such a great dance, so much fun. Um, but what happens during that dance? That's right. Chosen shows up drinking and gets into a fight with Daniel and ruins the entire dance, which was this guy's whole world. And so I, I think I think this guy might still have issues with Chosen, unresolved issues with Chosen. And maybe he uh, took martial arts himself. He he traded dancing from martial arts to be able to effectively be a bouncer at all future dances he would put on. So I think it's very possible that uh, Boy on the Street has a name, uh, that he has learned martial arts, and... Uh, maybe has some unresolved issues with both Chosen and Daniel for ruining that dance. So there's my pitch for Boy on the Street to appear in Cobra Kai Season 6. Let me know what you think. Okay, next. <laughs> Angry pro Property Manager. Okay, so this is the uh, old castle uh, where the Obon dance was to be held. Uh, of course, Daniel and Kumiko were having a romantic moment after running along the beach to, uh, you know, uh, that amazing song, Peter Cetera. And, uh, you know, he gets angry that they're there and he runs them off and he's angry. Um, you know, for, for completionist sake, I included this character. I, I don't, he's probably not alive. And I, I don't even know if people would recognize him if he showed up in Cobra Kai season six. Um, so I think it's probably not too likely he would appear in Cobra Kai season six, but I don't know, guys, if you, you have a potential idea for how this character could, could be around, uh, does he work for Sato? Probably Sato owns everything. He owned the castle. Um, so maybe this guy works for Sato. He's one of his main property managers. Uh, so potentially there could be a connection there. Uh, maybe he still knows chosen. Maybe he carried on Sato's old mantle when Sato became good, you know, and wanting to give, the village back to everyone. Maybe this guy got upset with Sato and 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 left him and uh, became greedy and you know just amassed all the property he could. And you know maybe his goal in life was to take this castle back, to take ownership of this castle back. And you know maybe he is is kind of a, a tyrant now in Okinawa. I, I, you know, who, who knows? I don't know. I'm trying to think of something fun for this character, but let, let, let me know what you think. It's probably not likely that we would see him again, but uh, you know, who, who knows? Uh, okay. So GI number one. Okay. You'll remember, this is a very memorable scene. This is the guy who tried to, he's a soldier who try, eh, right. He's a soldier who tried to smash those ice blocks. And then, thought Daniel was making fun of him. 
you know, and he said, do you think you can do better, big mouth? Do you think you can do better? So here's the thing. The actor who plays uh, GI number one is uh, Clarence Gilliard Jr., who was in Top Gun. He was in, you know, a lot of movies, actually, and is still acting today. Um, he played a soldier. And I'm guessing that the soldier probably, I'm, I'm thinking likely, could have trained at Sato's dojo. Obviously, Chosen runs in, you know, gets into the scene. Uh, it's very possible that Chosen knew the soldier or the soldier trained with Sato and learned a version of Miyagi-Do. You know, so uh, I think given the fact that, you know, obviously he's an actor who's been in everything, uh, he he would know, directly know uh, Chosen and potentially, who knows, he he continues to know Daniel. I don't know if it's likely that he would appear in the series, but I think there's an angle there, um, you know, maybe for a soldier with a different different perspective on fighting that's not Cobra Kai, you know, I I think there's potential there. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll see, but, um, I want to bring up this character cause I, who knows, he could be kind of a surprise cameo, um, it, depending on where the story goes. Okay. Next Toshio and Taro. Yes. Kind of, I, I kind of think of them as the OG snake and Dennis, you know, they, they kind of do the same thing. They are, uh, they are chosen's henchmen. Uh, you know, either work directly for Chosen or they're friends with him or they work for Sato. You know, they're always around Chosen. They're always there. They're very happy to be mean and, you know, basically bully everyone. So they could be friends or they could be paid. Uh, we, we don't know. But uh, we, we don't know what happened to them. Chosen basically ran off into the tropical storm or the, the storm uh, and he came back you know, threatened to kill Kumako, uh, got into a fight with Daniel and eventually his life, you know, turned around. And so if these guys worked for Sato, it's possible that Sato dismissed them because Sato had a change of heart. Uh, it's possible that if they were friends of chosen, that once chosen turned his life around, he really didn't need henchmen anymore. Uh, they weren't necessary. So he dismissed them. You know, it's so I think it'd be easy to say that these guys probably are just not part of Chosen's life anymore. Um, they haven't been a part of his life for a long time. Who knows where they wound up today? They're probably not the kind of people who who wound up being super successful in life because they had such a bad attitude. But uh, they they're they could be out there in Okinawa. Um, I, I don't know these these guys. I, I don't think they made as much of an impact as, say, Snake and Dennis, um, because they really didn't have too many lines. I'll be honest, like, the thing that really stuck out was, to me, always, was that this character, this bully, had a baseball cap, you know? Um, they really have no character development. They're just there to be muscle for Chosen, basically. So, um, we could see him again, but I, I don't know. I would think it's probably a low likelihood that they'd pop up. If they do pop up, then I think that's just kind of a nice little bonus for the fans. Um, I don't see them being like huge characters, but Yuna popped up, you know, so who knows? These guys could pop up too, uh, especially if Chosen is a big character in season six or has a big presence and maybe he needs to call his friends and maybe they'll, they're will they still his friends. Maybe they had a change of heart with Chosen. I don't know. Let me know. Let me know what you think. Um, okay. Karate kid part three. All right, let's pause guys. Cause I want to get to, I want to get to your comments anyway. Let me, let me go back. Uh, we had so many great, uh, comments. John says, I love this Ken cast episode. Really great. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. We've got DJ Club Rule says Chosen versus Boy of the Street in season six. Yes. Um, Shin Batman says BD Wong was great in Oz. Yeah, I mean, he's been he's been in everything. Darkest Hour says BD Wong is great in everything. Um, and so I, I think that if he wants to, and if there's a part for him, I mean, he'd be a great actor, at least to appear in Cobra Kai season six. 
Uh, but yeah, maybe maybe there's too much explanation needed to establish who exactly his character is. Uh, I don't know. Um, let's see. Uh, yes, we're talking about GA num number one. Okay, Liz says GI number one later learned martial arts from Chuck Norris. Yes. Um, Don Don Power Ranger says the late Clarence Gilliard was a finalist for the role of Geordie LaForge in Star Trek The Next Generation. LeVar Burton got that role. Wow, I did not know that. That's that's really fantastic. Um, yes, and I'm sorry, I guess I missed that. He did pass away in 2022. So probably not likely that he'd appear in uh, Cobra Kai. But, you know, kind of a fun thing to think about, that character. Uh, let's see. Um, Marianella says Toshio and Taro maybe redeemed themselves and maybe became senseis. Maybe they helped Chosen. Yeah, I like that idea. Um, Clifford says you're a great researcher. <laughs> hey, we're doing research together. You guys, you guys help me out. We're we're trying to get to what what could happen in season six. So this is this is a lot of fun. Um, Matt Moore says I hope Chosen brings back this yellow scorpion ninja suit and swings down from the rafters onto the Sakai Taikai. I love that idea. I'd love to see Chosen wearing that again. That would be a lot of fun because that was that was pretty badass. Um, all right, guys, uh, we got a ch oh checking in on our poll, guys. Be sure to vote in our chat poll right now with uh, seventy votes. Right now, Julie Pierce is at seventy-seven percent. You guys think will Julie Pierce will appear in season six? Uh, Thirteen percent say Dennis and Snake. 4% Freddy Fernandez and 6% Colonel Dugan. Okay. And of course, let me know in the chat if you think someone else will appear. And we're going to keep going through the movies. And as we go through all of these characters, keep track of them. And if one hits you like, ah, that one, that one should appear in Cobra Kai season six. We'll kind of do a recap at the end and we'll see what you guys think. If there are any new ideas for who could appear in Cobra Kai season six. Um, Let's see what is going on. Okay, let's let's skip back to cover, uh, to Karate Kid Three. All right, we're going to go through all the characters in Karate Kid Three that have not appeared in Cobra Kai, and we'll we'll try to be as complete as possible, and w maybe we'll think of storylines for them. Okay, first up, Margaret. Good old Margaret. Um. She is probably, I would think, if you talk to Terry Silver, one of his great assistants of all time. And uh, she is willing to sit there while he's naked in the tub in a bubble bath and just conduct business. You know, that that's the mark of, of a personal assistant that's just going above and beyond. I'm sure he pays her well to be per just permanently there to, to attend to all his business needs. Now, Margaret, um, unfortunately, Diana Webster, who played Margaret, she has passed away. So I obviously I, I don't think the character will be back, uh, but we want to mention Margaret because she is such a great character uh, who thought that Mike Barnes was obnoxious. So uh, always Margaret is close to our hearts. Next up is Milos. Oh, yes. The man handing Terry his pl plutonium deals. Um. Milos, uh, the character, the actor who played Milos has also passed away. Uh, and I don't think we'll see Milos because Terry did have a new Butler as we saw in Cobra Kai season five. So I think that's a separate character. And since the original actors passed on, I think that a Butler type character, like we saw in season five, uh, would just be recast anyway, but Milos, uh, is also close in our hearts. And I want to, uh, personally pay tribute to him. He helped Terry get his martial arts magazines and get the cars that would uh, deceive Daniel. So uh, it, it really, he's another great assistant that would go to any length to please Terry Silver. So again, probably 0% chance we'd see Milos in season six, unless guys see these, these characters. Um, it's possible like Mrs. Milo, it's possible these characters, oop, that's a little preview. Um, it's possible that these characters could appear in flashback form. So if we go back and see Terry during this era, we could see these characters, Milos and Margaret. Um, 
and especially if what Hayden Schlossberg hinted at that there's some possibility of a Dynatox series, I think we would need to see Margaret and Milosh. So anyway, you guys have seen this briefly here a couple times. Mamona and girlfriend. They were there. Uh, obviously, they knew Terry Silver and they knew John Kreese. Uh, probably the darker side of both of them, the scuzzy side of both of them. Uh, but uh, Mamona and girlfriend are, uh, you know, obviously fan favorites in Karate Kid 3. Uh, and who knows what they've been up to? They could have been gathering intel uh, in Tahiti. You know, obviously... Terry Silver, high power guy with a lot of international knowledge. Uh, John Kreese, former special forces. And, um, you know, who knows? They could be stationed in Tahiti. They could have been gathering intelligence this entire time for from, from all these powerful uh, business figures. And who would suspect Mamona and her girlfriend? Uh, you know? So they could appear in Cobra Kai season six. Uh, maybe they're the ones with the, uh, maybe Terry deploys them again, or maybe they, they've become successful in their own right. I don't know, guys. I, it's probably very, very unlikely that Mamona and her girlfriend will appear in Cobra Kai season six, but we have to mention them. And if there are any possibilities, let me know what you think. Uh, okay. So next the bonsai tree delivery guy. That's right. The guy who comes in after Miyagi sells his truck, the guy who comes in and delivers bonsai trees. Again, this is probably a character. I, I'm assuming if if uh, we were going to see him, we might have seen him when uh, Daniel LaRusso, LaRusso Auto Group giving away bonsai trees. You know, we might have seen him delivering those bonsai trees to LaRusso Auto Group. I mean, I don't I assume after like 35 years, this, this guy probably doesn't ju just deliver bonsai trees his entire life. But, you know, uh, we could... We could see him again. Uh, again, this is more for completionist's sake. Um, probably not a high likelihood we'll see this guy again, but you never know. Like this could be, maybe we see this actor come back somehow in, in season six and it's not even addressed who exactly this character is, but maybe it's an Easter egg for fans that we'd see this actor come back and maybe he's gone on. Maybe he runs the Sakai, Sakai Tai guy right now. You never know. <laughs> he was maybe he, he kind of saw what uh, was going on at uh, this Mr. Miyagi's little trees. Saw Daniel get beat up. Saw Mike Barnes and Dennis and Snake, and uh, was inspired to uh, follow his true passion, which is martial arts. And he ascended the ranks internationally. He's now running the Sekai Takai, uh, and, and with, with you know, so he stands up there in his uh, garments, standing in front of bonsai trees. Maybe. I don't know. I, I think it's still probably unlikely that we'll, we'll see we'll see this guy in uh, Cobra Kai season six. But let me know what you think. It's possible. Next, fan favorite guys, Dennis and Snake. Yes, Dennis and Snake. Uh, I think everyone has been asking for Dennis and Snake. This is probably one of the top requested character groupings of all time. Um, if you have seen my interviews with William Christopher Ford you know that right now behind the scenes, Jonathan Alvinson, apparently not many people or anyone knows where he is right now. Um, but he could emerge at some point wanting to appear in Cobra Kai season six. It's possible the showrunners are in contact with him and know where he is. Um, however, William Christopher Ford, you've seen him on this channel, did an amazing job playing Dennis. Um, so here's the deal. I think there's, Given Jonathan Alvinson's situation, I think there's a lower likelihood of both Snake and Dennis appearing in Cobra Kai season six. But Dennis, as a character, even without Snake, if you think about it, he is really directly tied into Terry Silver, John Kreese, Mike Barnes, and Daniel LaRusso, right? And, and Jessica Andrews. So he is directly tied into major events in Daniel LaRusso's life. And he was a major coworker or subordinate of Terry Silver. Uh, he's a martial artist. Uh, and so I, I think the character ties in pretty well. Um, so I think the question is, do, would the character of Dennis come back without the character of Snake? And if yes, then I think there's a decent chance we could see Dennis in Cobra Kai season six. Um, but again, I think it's up to your 
opinion, would Dennis come back without Snake or are they kind of a package deal? Um, so, you know, obviously I'd love to see Dennis again because, you know, I'm, a, I'm such a huge fan of Karate Kid 3. Um, but uh, I don't know. Let me know what you think. If uh, Dennis and Snake need to be a package deal, would Dennis come back without Snake? Do you think that Jonathan Albertson will come back and emerge and want to be in Cobra Kai season six? Uh, so I think that's this is this is really murky. I, I I don't know. I have high hopes. Um, I think some of some things are possible, but I just I don't know. I probably need your opinions on this as well. But hugely popular, huge request for these characters to come back. Um, so let's see. Anyone else in Karate Kid Three? Oh yeah, that's right. Okay, so this is the uh, Go Daniel girl. So if you're watching Karate Kid Three, Terry Silver is watching the fight very intently. And uh, there's a girl right behind him that screams, go, Daniel. And you can, it, it right before it cuts away, you can see, it looks like Terry Silver might have been distracted or kind of upset when he heard that right behind his ear, uh, which is really hilarious. But I mean, think about this. She was there right behind Terry Silver. She saw Terry Silver speak, even in the midst of his inspiring speech to everyone, she decides to continue rooting for Daniel. She is a Daniel fan. and which means that she is not a fan of Terry Silver. And because she's at a martial arts tournament, a youth martial arts tournament, you'd have to believe that this girl would want to go in and study martial arts and potentially dedicate her life to being a master martial artist. And then what does she see on television when she grows up? She sees Terry Silver back. TV commercials for Cobra Kai. And she sees Terry Silver and goes, no way in hell. And so the events of season five inspire her to reach out to Daniel, join forces with Daniel, and share her knowledge to take down Terry Silver. I think that's a, I think that's a potential story for the Go Daniel girl. So, you know, is it likely? You know, I'm not going to say it's likely. But I, I think there's there's an interesting angle there. Um, you know, I mean, maybe it'd be just a subtle introduction of this character. I don't know anyway, but, uh, this girl always stuck out to me watching Karate Kid three always made me laugh that this little girl <laughs> would be like in Terry's ear and, uh, maybe irritating Terry silver. And it'd be fun if she could continue irritating Terry silver. Um, Okay, guys, I think is that the end? Okay, so that was the end of uh, the characters for Karate Kid 3. Of course, let me know if I missed any. Uh, let's go back to your comments. I know you guys have a lot of thoughts on all of this stuff. Um, Matt Moore says, Terry knows all about Momona and Girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And Carice does too. Who knows? They could come back. Um, uh, this was, let's see... Um, Darkest Hour says, what if all these side characters were planted by Colonel Dugan to keep tabs on Silver and Crease? Something reflective of Dugan's paranoia. You know, that's really interesting. That, that's an interesting thought. I will say, that if, if you're interested in the next Karate Kid, I did a wonderful podcast with the Last Row podcast. We did a deep dive analysis. We went, I think, about two hours. And so you can listen to it in the podcast form or watch it on my YouTube channel. But we... Uh, analyzed the next Karate Kid to a level that no one has. I think it's a fun conversation. We talked about Colonel Dugan. In fact, we rated him on the Last Road podcast. They have a patented villain scale. And so we, we rated him on the scale. And intelligence-wise, <laughs> he I, I think we, we determined that he was... Uh, really, of all the villains, he just wasn't that bright. He didn't he didn't have a really good plan. So I don't think Colonel Dugan probably would have intelligence on the level of Terry Silver. So it's possible he's paranoid, but I think I think Terry Silver maybe would be more likely to have the resources and the willingness to kind of stalk everyone or keep tabs, keep surveillance on everyone. Uh, but I like that idea. He's definitely very paranoid. Um, uh, the tree delivery guy, uh, Robert Huswick says maybe he delivers some bonsai trees to LaRusso Auto. He still could, right? He still could. Um, we could see him doing that. And that would be a fun Easter egg. Even if they didn't say who he was, 
it would be kind of a fun Easter egg for all of us. Um, let's see. Jane Mott says, didn't all their bon bonsai trees get destroyed when Mike Barnes and his friends came to the shop to persuade Danny to enter the tournament? They did. Um, so this is after that. And what Mr. Miyagi did was he sold the truck. So Daniel decided on his own, because he's very headstrong, to go out to Devil's Cauldron and dig up Mr. Miyagi's very precious bonsai tree that he placed there so no one could get to it. Daniel decided to go get it uh, just on his own. And uh, he brings it back all damaged and finds out that Mr. Miyagi had sold his truck to pay for new stock in, you know, a new stock of bonsai trees. So this is the guy who brought in the new bonsai trees. So, you know, if, if that hadn't, if, if not for Mike Barnes, we wouldn't have seen this character, the bonsai tree delivery guy. Uh, Jaw says, son of Mamona, probably son of Silver, and participated in the Sakai against Silver students. Yeah, that's another angle. Like, did uh, Mamona or her girlfriend have a relationship with uh, Terry Silver or John Kreese? Could, could there be some sort of illegitimate offspring uh, coming back for revenge? I, I love that angle. That's, that's wonderful. Uh, let's see. Darkest Hour says, Dennis and Snake are basically the same as the school baddies in Power Ranger. Yes. Um, very good. Uh, Marianella, Snake and Dennis. Yes, please. I, th I think that's a big one. Uh, Matt Moore says, if you're going to be a bad boy in LA, Snake's the boy to be bad with. Yes. Um, AEH says, we need Dennis and S Snake. Terry needs people in his corner. Well, you know, if you think about it, Terry, a lot of people thought that Terry would go straight for Dennis and Snake at, after the events of season four, but he didn't. He went for Kim Daun. Um, he did not go for Dennis and Snake. So what would Terry do now? I assume he's going to get out of jail pretty quickly because, you know, we're, we've got the Save Silver campaign and he's a billionaire. So what is he going to do? I bet, I bet he could call some of his old friends. Maybe that's one way. Or do they not like him anymore? Did they go a different way? Did they lose interest in Terry when Terry lost his money? We don't know. It's a, it's a good question. Uh, Rocky Balboa, Dennis was in charge of Mike's training. He should have been a Cobra Kai sensei. I know. Um, I know. And the one thing, one thing that about Dennis, which is, I don't know, we'll have to get William Christopher Ford's thought on this from a character standpoint, but Dennis does lose really quickly to Daniel. Like when he provokes Daniel, uh, in the, uh, bonsai shop at night, uh, Daniel just, you know, Dennis shreds the shoji screens and daniel you know that whole back off you back off daniel just dominates dennis so is that planned you know was was dennis kind of faking daniel out uh was he was that like a ploy to to get mike to fight to see how well mike could fight i don't know um jaw says really snake could return and probably dennis a great cameo i agree clifford says what if Chol chosen's old friends will be needed to protect kumiko I'm sure Silver knows about her from the background on Chosen. Yeah, he probably does. That's a good, it's a good point. And we did get confirmation from the creators that season six is going to be more international in nature. Would Okinawa be part of that? Uh, or is just South Korea going to be part of that? Uh, we don't know where the big Sakai Taikai tournament's going to be. So you know, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll see. Uh, Robert says, I think the go Daniel girl is probably buried in Borneo somewhere. <laughs> You're right. That was, she did provoke Terry during his Borneo days. That's for sure. So, oh man, I, I hope she's okay. Hope she's okay. Um, Robert Huswick. Oh yes. Thank you. You forgot the guy Daniel punched in the nightclub. How could I forget? Thank you, Robert genius. How could I forget? I, I, I apologize. This is why it's so great to have you on here. Um, so the guy that punched Daniel in the nightclub, we don't know what happened. Daniel said he'd pay for it, but did he pay for it? You know, on top of that, Terry Silver was going to pay this guy money and he didn't, you know, where's the guy with my money? So this guy in the nightclub could potentially be trying to hunt, hunt down both Terry Silver and Daniel LaRusso. Um, and the actor's name, I think, was Gabe Jarrett, who starred in Real Genius. Um, I don't know if he's out there still acting, but 
I mean, that would be an interesting character to come back because that is a physical confrontation. He saw Daniel at his darkest. Um, and the guy's a jerk. And uh, Jessica Andrews is part of the show now, too. So I think that's a great point. I, I can't believe I, for, I forgot to include him. I, I would say there's a non-zero chance that he would appear in Cobra Kai season six. It'd have to be the right. There's a lot of story going on. So that's something we have to keep in mind is which characters would fit into the story the easiest or the best. Um, but, you know, he's got a lot of direct connections with people and he's got a reason for having a grudge on Daniel and Terry Silver. So I love that. Thank you. Uh, Kate Maloney says, after getting betrayed by Silver, Dennis found out he has a gift for making oriental furniture and is a major supplier to Mike Barnes's store. He has dirt on Silver and now he wants revenge. That's fun. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> that's, that's so great. The, the great thing about this, I think, with these characters is they're so wonderful. You could go in any direction with these characters and bring them back. And I, I would love that, especially if Snake somehow can't come back as a character. Uh, finding out some way to bring Dennis back would be incredible. So uh, I, I love that, Kate. Thank you for sharing. I, I love these theories. Um, what else do we have? Curtis Clark joining us from Facebook. Dennis could come back, seeing as how he was Terry's sparring partner. He was also Barnes' sparring partner in the training montage before the tournament starts. Barnes could possibly still have contact with him, especially since Barnes is still in shape and is still sharp in his skills when he fought Chosen. That's a really great point. Maybe they became friends. You know, it's, uh, I don't know what happened between Terry and Mike Barnes after that tournament. If they just broke off contact, I don't know if Terry paid him or Mike Barnes or not, but it sounds like Terry kind of went downhill shortly after that. So it's possible that Dennis left Terry and maybe he got along well with Mike. You're right. They could have kept up contact. Um, I love that idea. Thank you, Curtis. That's, that's great. Uh, Garrett says, wow, a lot of people picked Julie Pierce. Yeah. What are we up to guys? We're almost up to 90 votes in the, in the, uh, YouTube chat poll. Be sure to vote if you're watching this right now. Um, 98% right now picked Julie Pierce and we have almost 90 votes in. So that's, that's awesome. Yeah, guys, thank you. Thank you for voting. Um, I, I think Julie Pierce is a favorite, but second place at 11% still second place is snake and Dennis. So that's wonderful. Uh, Sasha David says, a crazy idea to bring Julie back. She works in anger management. <laughs> Cheyenne knows her. After she sees what happened with Terrence, she calls Julie. That's so That's so cool. Yeah, it's it's endless. The ways you could get these characters back. Uh, I, I love that idea. Um, man, so, gosh, I'm trying to get to everyone. Um, Jaws says, Ken Cole and Marissa from Cobra Cola Pierce. That's great. Oh, hey, that you never know. Never know what could happen. Uh, you know, I'm if that happens, I'm definitely not saying ahead of time, but uh, but that's a nice thought. Thank you, Jaws. I thank you for being a Cobra Cole fan uh and and promoting Cobra Cole. It means a lot. And that was so much fun to do. If you guys haven't seen Cobra Cole, go ahead, check the link in the description, watch Cobra Cole. Uh, amazing short film, got to do with uh David Shatra, who plays Tom Cole in the Cobra Kai series. Of course, my name's Ken Cole. And of course, Willie Cole was a, an attorney that knew Terry Silver. So check, check, check that out. I think you'll enjoy it. Um, let's see what we got. Maite, good to see you. Buenas noches, uh, Ken y a todos. Thank you so much for joining us, Maite. I know that you are, I'm not sure where you are, maybe Argentina, but thank, thank you for joining us. Um, let's see. Kate Maloney says, Mike is married to Julie. She wasn't around during the fiasco because... She went back east to attend her grandmother's funeral. Oh, that's that's interesting. I know. We know. See, we know Mike kicked Jessica Andrews in the stomach, which was really a mean move. But if Mike tried to do that with Julie Pierce, nope, that that's not happening. Not happening. So, um, so so Julie Julie could put the smack down on Mike Barnes. So I I think uh, yeah, that could work. I like that. All right, guys, we've got one more movie in the original. Karate Kid movie franchise, and that is the next Karate Kid. That's right. We're going to be going through all the characters uh, in from the next Karate Kid and seeing who could appear in Cobra Kai season six. And of course, let me know your thoughts as we go through. All right. First up, I've got Julie Pierce. Yep. Okay. 
So let's be honest. Most of you guys were up to 79% in the poll right now. I think Julie Pierce will appear in Cobra Kai season six. I think the universe wants Julie Pierce to come back uh, because regardless of what you think of the movie, the character was amazing, I think, and really allowed us to see a new side of Mr. Miyagi. But on top of that, we have Hilary Swank. This was her first feature film role. She is a double Academy Award winning actress. She is so talented. And um, it would seem obvious to me and so many people that if at all possible, she would make an appearance in Cobra Kai season six. I know fans have been wanting to see this uh, reunion or meeting between Julie Pierce and Daniel LaRusso because they are really the only two students we know of that uh, Mr. Miyagi trained. So it would be amazing to see that. And she would have so much insight uh, to bring to the table about Miyagi-Do uh, from a completely different perspective. If you remember, and guys, check out that last row podcast, Ken Cole, we did that deep dive analysis on Next Karate Kid. But one of the things we kn we talked about was how Julie Pierce was a completely different student and it changed how Mr. Miyagi taught karate. And it kind of showed how in the Cobra Kai series, Daniel being so stubborn and holding to the exact same lessons that Mr. Miyagi taught to him, that Daniel needed to basically regurgitate those exact same lessons for everyone else. Um, that I don't think was Mr. Miyagi's style. He, I think, knew Daniel, knew what kind of character he was, knew he was hard headed and came up with a very specific way to teach Daniel very quickly. And so he tailored his teaching to Daniel. And you can see in the next Karate Kid that Mr. Miyagi tailored his teaching to Julie. It's a different, different techniques. And, you know, Julie was at a different po point than Daniel. Julie was more advanced than Daniel. Um, and so she would have a whole new insight, I think, into uh, Miyagi-Do Karate. Uh, and I think it would be very interesting to see them get together. Julie would also be in a unique position to kind of put Daniel in his place. And I don't mean in an argument way, but just, you know, being able to be a sounding board for Daniel and remind Daniel when he might be going in the wrong direction. You know, um, she could be another voice for Mr. Miyagi that maybe even Chosen couldn't be because Chosen didn't keep up a relationship with Mr. Miyagi. So maybe she could be another voice of Mr. Miyagi for Daniel, which is nice. Of course, guys, we have to talk about the fact that uh, Hillary Swank, if she comes back in Cobra Kai season six, we don't know how big a role she would have. It could be maybe a couple of episodes. It could be, or it could be a number of episodes. Uh, I, I assume she's very expensive <laughs> budget wise. Well, you know, we don't know how that factors into the decision of how much to put her into the story. But here's an idea, and I'll float this by you, is if she comes back for Cobra Kai season six, we know that there are other spinoff series in the works. I think from just like a business perspective, <laughs> it would make too much sense for Hillary Swank, she's such a big star and has headlined series, even on Netflix before. What if you came up with a new Miyagi-verse series based on Julie Pierce? Like, I, I have to believe that that is somehow in discussion right now. Um, you have this major star, Hillary Swank. Uh, this really, even though the movie isn't necessarily beloved, the character is. Um, you can still tie her in with Mr. Miyagi. She's tied in with everyone we know. And um, it's Hillary Swank. You know, so what would you guys think of a Julie Pierce centered series in the Miyagi verse uh, that is a spinoff of Cobra Kai? Would that be interesting to you? Because I have to believe those conversations are going on. And I'm wondering if that's even an idea that Hillary Swank brought up and like, hey, guys, if you want me to be in Cobra Kai season six, I don't know. What do you think about a whole other series? I actually love that character and I think there's potential. I don't know. I'm, I'm just making that up. I have no clue, but it seems like something that uh, would come up in discussions, I would think. Okay, next, Eric. Okay, so everyone, uh, Eric is Julie's beau in Next Karate Kid. Uh, he's the one actually who gets bullied as much or more than she does, uh, he gets he gets his car blown up 
He's the one who has to deal with Dugan and the alpha elites very directly. Um, and that's one of the, I don't know, curiosities about this movie is like Julie's kind of the main character, but then it's almost like Eric is threatening to be kind of like the main character as well, uh, because he's, he's the one dealing with a lot of this bullying and conflict, but, uh, they are together and, uh, they kind of fall in love, I guess, uh, at least the high school version of love. They go to the prom, uh, the movie ends with, uh, Eric's car getting blown up at the docks and, uh, he got beat up and then she put the smack down on Ned and the movie kind of just ends. So we don't know what happens between Julie and Eric, but you know, people talked about Julie being married to these different characters. It's possible that these, they stuck together and Eric could be married to Julie, you know, and maybe if Julie Pierce appears in Cobra Kai season six, it's possible we could see Eric in some capacity. Um, that would be a total surprise. I think people would, would smile if they saw Eric and how that worked out. Um, so I don't know. I think if, if everyone's right and we are over, no, we're at 78% of people right now voting that Julie Pierce will appear in Cobra Kai season six. I think there's a decent chance we could see Eric even for a scene or a couple scenes. Uh, he was obviously in the alpha elite. And if we do see Eric, I think that increases the possibility of some of these other characters being in there. All right. So let's, let's keep going. Colonel Dugan, good old smiling Colonel Dugan. You know, we talked about him before and again, I'll refer everyone to my video about Colonel Dugan. There's one about do Terry Silver and John Kreese know Colonel Dugan. And I think it's possible that they do. And if Julie Pierce is going to be back and Terry Silver and John Kreese know him, I think there's a, decent chance we could see Colonel Dugan appear in Cobra Kai season six. Again, there are so many storylines already going into season six. You know, we, we don't know if there's room for all these characters, but uh, Colonel Dugan also had a major beef with Eric. So if Eric appears in season six, um, there's just more, more strife that could happen. Uh, so Michael Ironside, amazing actor. He's still acting. Uh, I would love to see him in a scene with Thomasine Griffith and Martin Cove. I just think everyone's screen would melt if you had those three actors in the same scene talking to each other. Can you guys imagine that? Ah, just absolutely, absolutely incredible. Uh, so we'll see. I don't even know if Michael Ironside would be up for it, but he's he keeps active, so it's very possible. Um, you know, I, I have to think that some of these actors are kind of tickled that uh, these characters that, you know, probably they played and really didn't think much about uh, could be back in play, you know? So uh, who knows? Uh, I, I have personal hopes that Colonel Dugan is somehow in this. Uh, we know that he was a he in, in charge of keeping discipline. Uh, he was essentially head of the hall monitors at Julie's High School, which I visited live. Check that out uh, in Brookline, Massachusetts, Brookline High School. So he was in charge of security there, in charge of the alpha elites. And the Valley High School guys has had a lot of discipline issues. So you think if they need to get their stuff organized, they might, they might go to the uh, top expert in the country on school discipline and keeping an ordered school. And that might be Colonel Dugan. They might hire Colonel Dugan to uh, maintain order at the Valley High School where everyone's going. I don't know, it's an idea. And then he might have other, other tie-ins with, with other people as well. All right, so Colonel Dugan, we've talked about him. Uh, all right, so now let's back out the Alpha Elite. You can see Dugan's kind of pathetic. He's eating lunch with the Alpha Elite in the cafeteria. Uh, that's funny. Okay, so we'll go into the specific characters, but like, would the alpha elite appear in Cobra Kai season six? I don't think so. I think that's very unlikely. We're probably more likely to get mentions of the alpha elite or specific characters from the alpha elite, uh, which would include Ned. Okay. So Michael Cavalieri played Ned. I think he did a really good job. He's he, you know, it was, it was an interesting role. It's an interesting movie. Uh, but I think he did a fantastic job playing Ned. Um, I don't know if he would come back. Um, it seems like there's so many antagonists already in the Cobra Kai series. Um, even if you brought Julie Pierce back, it, it would seem like Julie Pierce would come back to help 
Daniel and Johnny and everyone with their problems, as opposed to, you know, bring in all of these antagonists for the next Karate Kid. I'm not sure because it does seem like the Alpha Elite probably fell out with Colonel Dugan after the events at the docks at the end of next Karate Kid. So th this is one where, I don't know, it's possible. Uh, if there's an entry point, sure. But I think it's a lot less likely we see, we'd see Ned than, say, Colonel Dugan, uh, which is probably a little less likely than seeing Julie Pierce. So, you know, I, I would say kind of a low low likelihood, but not impossible. That That's what I would say. All right, next. Charlie. <laughs> so this is... Charlie's kind of like the Bobby of the Alpha Elite. Uh, he's, you know, wanting to do his best. He probably wants to get a good reference to the Academy, like everyone else who's in the Alpha Elite. Um, and he refuses Colonel Dugan's orders at the docks. There's a point at which, at which Charlie absolutely refuses to do uh, what Colonel Dugan asks. So he's not in it as hard as Ned, necessarily. Um and you don't get the sense that he's necessarily an evil guy. He's just been programmed by Dugan. Um, could he appear in Cobra Kai season six? Well, maybe about the same level as Ned. The problem is you have an amazing actor. Walton Goggins is an amazing actor. He's in so much now. Um, absolutely talented. Uh, he's fantastic. And it'd be fun to have the character appear just so Walton Goggins could appear in the series. Um, but, I think for him to appear, you know, these great actors, if you, I think if you want them to appear in the series, you'd have to give them, so, even if it's a cameo, it would have to be somewhat meaningful. Uh, and so the question is, can you bring Charlie into this and make it meaningful? Um, something where Walton Goggins would want to play in it. Um, I don't know. I'm not sure. I, I think there's so much potential with those characters that it would be great to see them. You know, a lot of people have said that, you know, the series, you know, there's so many storylines and characters. And, you know, at this point, if we're introducing so many, so many more characters in here, um, you know, that might not work. I think if Julie Pierce comes into season six and she is a big presence, like say she's in half the episodes of season six, then you could start to see these characters come in because they would pertain to her backstory, her history. Um if Colonel Dugan appears, you know, if he knows Crease and Silver, and if he knows, um, you know, obviously he knows uh, Julie Pierce, but if he's tied in with all of these characters and he appears in multiple episodes, I think you could see maybe a Charlie. But um, again, I think probably low likelihood like Ned. Um, it'd be a nice surprise and it's possible. But, you know, I think as we kind of like step away from the main I don't know, connections, character connections, story connections, it becomes less likely uh, that they would appear in Cobra Kai season six. But who knows if there's a Julie Pierce series, you know, I, th I think it's fair game and someone like Walton Goggins could play a much, much bigger role. I don't know. So I'd be interested to hear what you guys have to say about that. Okay. The Boston Rednecks. I mean, this was interesting to me. Uh, growing up around Boston myself, Ju Julie and Mr. Miyagi go out to uh, visit the monks uh, in the countryside of Massachusetts. And, uh, while heading out there, they run into some very mean rednecks. And, uh, I don't know. I think it's always funny, no matter where a movie is set, once they head out into the non-urban areas, there are rednecks, stereotypical rednecks. Uh, so, uh, this was pretty funny to me, um, that you would have these guys with these accents, uh, up in the Boston area. Uh, but why not, right? It's it's kind of a, a fun, crazy movie anyway. Uh, obviously, I don't think they'll appear in uh, Cobra Kai season six, but we have to mention them for completion's sake. We have to. But may maybe some of you think that there is a potential uh, avenue for them to appear in Cobra Kai season six. If you do, please let me know. I'm all ears. I would get a kick out of seeing them. Uh, the Monks. So will the monks appear, any of the monks? Probably not exactly the same monks. I think some of them were older uh, when the movie was shot, so the characters might not be around anymore. Uh, but could some of the younger monks appear? Or uh, again, this, this is tough because the monks are connected with Julie, but you really have to get them to, to, to leave and uh, probably come to the valley in California 
or internationally or wherever the story is going to be. So I think for that very reason, it's probably extreme, ex extremely unlikely we'd see the monks. I would say less than a 1% chance. Uh, I could be wrong on that, but I just, I think it would be very difficult to get them into the story uh, that takes place nowhere near where they are. They'd have to get on a plane or on a train or something to travel to be with Julie Pierce, who we don't know for sure is going to appear in Cobra Kai season six and who probably isn't going to be like in all the episodes. So um, I don't think so. But again, if there's a Julie Pierce series, it's possible. It's possible. Um, and then finally, the Hawk. Um, could the Hawk appear in Cobra Kai season six? Well, like so many of you have said, we do have a Hawk in Cobra Kai and maybe, maybe that, uh, Hawk character is kind of a subtle Easter egg for, uh, this Hawk in next karate kid, as well as Mohawk. Um, you know, I, I don't know how, how long Hawks live. I, I'd be surprised if he, if the, that Hawk is still alive today. Uh, but you know. I think the point of that was that Julie let the hawk go. So uh, the hawk was happy to live its life. So I don't necessarily see there being a story reason for the hawk to come flying back. And if she does travel to the valley, that's a long way for the hawk to fly to say hello. Uh, unless she's keeping the hawk as a pet, which again, that's against the whole point of next karate kid. So uh, I don't think we'll see the hawk. I don't think we will. Uh, anyway, uh, maybe there will be a hawk or another hawk, uh, or maybe a hawk attacks a character. And maybe that's how we see Julie Pierce for the first time. There's a there's a hawk attacking someone. Julie, Julie Pierce comes in and and says no, talks to the hawk and says, "Don't attack. They're my friend." I, I don't know, guys. I'm, I'm trying to think of something. But um, anyway, let's get back to your comments. Uh, so I think those are all the characters from the for the karate kid movies uh let, let's see, hear what you guys have to say we almost have a hundred votes right now guys vote in the poll if you're watching this on youtube vote in the poll on who you think would appear in cobra kai season six um i'm, so, I'm sorry guys i can't do this poll for facebook and x those are the other platforms you're watching this on but uh if you come over to the youtube platform there is that chat poll uh 79 percent julie pierce 79% of you think Julie Pierce will appear in Cobra Kai season six, 12% uh, Dennis and snake, 4% Freddie Fernandez and 5% Colonel Dugan. Uh, so the drawbacks of the poll is that I can only do four choices and you can't vote for multiples. So let's talk now about next karate kid and who you think could appear in Cobra Kai season six. Did anyone we talked about today kind of spark some thought about, ooh, that person could appear. Let's let's see. Um, Rocky Balboa says, Michael Ironside is doing a lot of convention appearances lately. Well, there you go. He's, he's out there. He's active. I think being in a series like Cobra Kai would enhance his convention appearances because there are a lot of conventions, excuse me, there are a lot of conventions that are uh, really focusing on these characters from Cobra Kai and bringing in the actors from Cobra Kai and Michael Ironside's an institution anyway. But uh, as far as like uh, appearing in a series that maybe hits a younger demographic, uh, that would be absolutely incredible. Um, let's see. Sasha David said, I still believe they held back on Bobby because they think about a spinoff on him. Way before Cobra Kai, I remember internet discussions on whether Bobby, Bobby would have won the All Valley without the disqualification. Yeah, and I did um, I did a couple of videos. Uh, I, in fact, I did one specifically on Bobby on could he have won. And I think he absolutely could have won if it weren't for Kreese telling him to get himself disqualified. And interestingly, Ron Thomas, who played Bobby, uh, retweeted that and agreed with that. He and who in uh, Ron Thomas is a black belt. He's a he was on 52 masters with, uh, William Christopher Ford, go to the Kaizen Dojo channel to check that out, that incredible series. But Ron Thomas was a master, you know, he's a martial arts master. So, um, he said that it was very likely that Bobby could have won. So that, that's pretty cool. Um, what else do we have? Maybe Ju Seth, uh, Seth T E Jackson says maybe Julie Pierce might have a niece named Samantha LaRusso is 
uh, Daniel Russo's sister figured Julie Pierce. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. What's so interesting, I think, about Julie Pierce and Daniel LaRusso is that we don't know what their relationship is. I mean, she hasn't been mentioned yet, but we know they probably know each other. In fact, I bet Daniel knew of Julie Pierce during the events of uh, The Next Karate Kid, because even though Mr. Miyagi was on the East Coast and in Boston, I'm sure he called or wrote back to Daniel. I have a feeling Daniel is probably watching his house, you know? Uh, <laughs> I don't know where Daniel was, but Daniel was seemed to be pretty much living there after the events of uh, Karate Kid 3, but maybe he was on to his next phase in life. But I'm sure Daniel was at least watching Miyagi's house um, while he was gone. So I'm sure Mr. Miyagi kept him up to, to date and was happy to tell Daniel about an, a new student. Um, so I'm, I'm sure they knew of each other uh, throughout all, all these years. So it'd be interesting to see what the relationship is. Marianella says, Kree, Silver, and Dugan would be epic. Agreed. I 100% agree with that. Um, Jane Mott says, imagine if Colonel Dugan came to the Valley High School as a teacher, maybe a PE teacher. Exactly. He could be a PE teacher. He could be there to take, uh, and that this is, all, I always thought it was a great opportunity because they were interviewing, Stingray was interviewing uh, for like a uh, security chief at the end of season two. Um, that would be a position where if they're desperate, if the school's desperate, they could get Colonel Dugan to come. And he's very effective at keeping order. Um, you know, I, I think probably, you know, and I was half expecting that to maybe happen where you could have a Colonel Dugan come in and kind of start an alpha elite at, at the Valley High School. And that would be a new faction. You know, you could have the alpha elite Cobra Kai. I don't know. But um that, I guess that could still that could still happen. So we'll, we'll see. Uh, Jaw says Michael Ironside's an amazing actor, and he's acting in movies and series. He is. He is still active, and he's fan phenomenal. Uh, Kate says Dugan did give his minions a direct order to murder a teenage girl over a falcon. That's some bat snot level crazy. Let that sink in. They were facing some major criminal charges. Right. And so that's the question. Would Colonel Dugan face charges? Would the alpha elite who were there, would Eric and Julie and Mr. Miyagi press charges on Colonel Dugan? It seems like Miyagi's not one to go to the police it, it, I, for whatever reason. And in fact, the police, you know, kind of a joke in this series is that the police aren't really of much help uh, to anyone. Um, so would they let it go? Would, would Dugan be defeated and kind of deal with things on his own would the alpha elite students turn him in because of that or would they kind of go their own way that's it's a really you'd, you'd have to think if he ordered the alpha elite and ned and charlie to kill julie um you know that that should be reported and maybe colonel dugan did have some repercussions maybe maybe because he was such an upstanding member of the community maybe law enforcement saw his service and he got off with a, a light punishment so i i don't know maybe something like that but i think he's definitely colonel dugan is the most unhinged of all the big sensei baddies in uh the karate kid series uh terry silver really has it under control most most of the time uh john crease again damaged but he's he's got it under control. Uh, Colonel Dugan is, is kind of a little bit psychotic. He's, he's kind of in his own reality. Uh, so, uh, yeah, it's, I don't know, be interesting to see, uh, if he comes into Cobra Kai season six, that would be incredible. Uh, AEH says it would be fun if Ned comes back as the school's new counselor for students. And that's the thing, like Ned could come back without Colonel Dugan, you know, Ned could come back in a variety of ways. Um, all these alpha elite characters were trained by Dugan to fight. You know, if you listen to the last row podcast and my, our analysis of the movie, you know, it does seem like the fighting is not really on the same level as say a Cobra Kai, but you know, they were trained to fight. So um, maybe that would give them some insight to come in and be a counselor to help troubled youth who are obsessed with martial arts and fighting. 
Um, Marianella says, I think we need a series of the Alpha Elite. I know. There's just so, like, it's hilarious. Like, the concept of the Alpha Elite is absolutely hilarious. Um, but, you know, I, I don't know. There's something about the name, the Alpha Elite. I think that's that's really great. Uh, yeah, I, I agree. I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it as well. Um, oh, gosh. So many great so many great comments guys uh jorge says ken cole if this wasn't the last season of cobra kai i can see characters from the franchise appear on the series we can only hope of faves will appear one way or another in the series i know it's it'd be easier if there were more seasons but right there's only it's only one last season so definitely if any of these characters appear i think they have to have a really integral relationship to the story and characters that we have uh, I, I don't see many gratuitous cameos unless they are kind of like background Easter egg type things. So uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Well, guys, thank you so much. I wish I could get to uh, everyone else's comments. I am going to continue this uh, in the finalists and up members of my channel. We are going into a chat where we're going to talk together about all of this. Uh, so definitely if you're a channel member, finalists and above, head over there. Um, if you enjoyed this today, go ahead and hit subscribe and like. Thank you for watching live. Um, be sure to, if you have a comment, uh, a thought you want to share, put it in the comments below the video, not just in the chat. Uh, in the comments below the video, anyone pulling this up and watching on the replay will see your comment as well. And I read through all the comments. It's wonderful to have you here today. It's been a lot of fun talking about these characters from these movies that we all love. And uh, we can't wait to see what will happen in Cobra Kai Season 6. So everyone, thank you so much for watching today. And again, we are going to hop over to the, to the members-only chat. And uh, we'll see you next time on KenCast. Right, Want to be part of the live KenCast show? Subscribe to the Ken Cole YouTube channel and hit the notification bell to get alerts about every new show. Thanks for joining us, and we look forward to seeing you next time on KenCast.